Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So I was talking about game balance, and we got some more uh, voicemails on game balance. And who far be it for me to avoid a voicemail, let alone two. And I'll remind you, you can leave voicemails using the Anchor app on your Android or iOS phone, means iPhone, or you can call me. Yes, we have a voicemail. Excuse me, the voicemail is 347-509-5168. You see? We got all you guys covered. Everything is ready and ripping and raring to go. All right. Our for, ugh, I tripped over my own tongue. Our first voicemail is from Laramie. He's one of our menches over on the Ten Cars Tavern Discord server, which means uh, it keeps you all in line. So, without further ado, let's go to Laramie. Hey there, Barkeep. It's Laramie checking in um, from your last couple episodes. I completely agree with Joe's point of class role and expectations. I think the big thing is there are some players out there that want to be able to do that thing every round, and that's just unfortunately not the way I like to play. Like you guys, I believe that, you know, sometimes it's the big bang, sometimes it's chipping away at the stone. I think there's definitely something to be said for niche protection. I think these need to be able to do these things. Players should be the ones out there healing. Everybody needs their own role. And that's, to me, just part of the mechanics. Uh, I, when I build an adventure, I'm going to build it as though all four big character classes are there. And if you didn't bring a thief with you, well, you better hope your fighter's got a lot of hit points. Uh, that's pretty much it from where I stand for as far as party balance. I think party balance is what you make of it. And one last point, you said something about game hole and beer. I'm pretty sure they sell beer in the main convention hall, so you should be in the clear. Anyway, I'll see you up in Madison. Cheers. Well, you make a very good point when it comes to adventures. I mean, for the longest time, I I rolled with a group in my college days that never had a cleric, and I had to take that into account. I didn't go very uh, undead heavy. We only had a three-player group, so they were going to be short with with the class here or there anyway. But assuming you got a a regular full-size group, the assumption should be that all four axes of the classes a fighter class a thief class a cleric class and a magic using class should be available and therefore the expectation should be that if you don't have such you're going to have an issue Uh, i'm fine with that so yeah it's all about the shining not the movie the shining it's all about allowing each player's character, each character in the group, give them a moment to shine. That's a little bit harder in larger groups, and I'll, I'll, I'll address that later on this podcast. Now, let's go to our other voicemail. Hey, Eric, this is Ray Otis of Plundergrounds, coming late to the party on game balance. Just had a few things to say. Uh, I don't think you should rely on mechanics for game balance or expect mechanics to provide game balance. They're just not going to do that ever uh, predictably. So I think there's two tricks as the GM you learn to achieve game balance. One of them is to move the spotlight around, and it helps if characters come with strong concepts. I mean, if a character comes to my table or a player comes to my table with um, an arthritic, used-up drunkard of a fighter that's got minus ones and all ability, I can guarantee that character some spotlight time, even though he's not optimized mechanically. Uh, And then as far as encounter balance goes, well, you know, players need to know when to run away. And as the GM, you've got to give them a chance to run away and you got to foreshadow threats so that they know when they're overmatched um, to help them be wiser people. (laughs) Love your podcast. You remind me of Gene Shepard, the storyteller from back in the day on talk radio. So enjoy hearing your voice. Have a good one. Yeah, Colin, that's also another good point, is that you can't guarantee balance mechanically. 
And there's an illusion that they try to start with with 5e, I think, well, probably before that with 4e, that you could do, uh, you could balance these classes. Again, your balance is to allow each character, each class, a moment in the spotlight. Now, they might miss that moment. They might not see it coming. They might not even be aware it's there for them, and that's their loss. But the opportunity should be there for all these classes to be given a chance to shine. Now, kind of continuing with this, but as most of you know who've been listening, I'm going to Game Hole. I leave this afternoon. I leave in about mm, uh, two and a half hours. Uh, When you're running for a convention group, that opportunity to allow every class to shine isn't always there. But what you have to do is you have to make sure you get a chance to focus on all your players. And that gets harder as the group gets larger. Now, I have uh, my, my method of GMing at conventions in general is... If I can fit you at the table, I will not turn you away. I don't care if you registered or not. Uh, if you're looking to play, and I don't do pre-gens, everything is towards which we light, so you're generating your character at the table. But I don't like turning players away. You're at a convention to have a good time, and if having a good time means you want to play in a certain game, I'm going to bend over backwards to make sure you get to play. Now, usually conventions max a table at somewhere between six and eight. I've run a convention with up to ten. I believe I could probably do twelve before it gets too unwieldy. And I've I've heard complaints about it, not from the players at the table, but there is a I read a complaint that uh, from somebody whose table was empty that. Other games were running above capacity. And that wasn't right. As a GM at a convention, yes, you want your you want to have players, but you know what? At a GM at a, con- as, at a convention, I'm not turning away players. Not if I can help it. Because I want the players to have fun. And if they feel they can have fun sitting down and playing a Swords and Wizardry uh, game with me or DCC with somebody else or, or Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea, uh, I, I can't in good faith say no. Uh, I understand the disappointment of having an empty table. I understand the disappointment of not having all your slots filled. And having maybe half a table. I understand that. But especially at a convention that is inviting me as, no matter how large or how small, uh, a special guest, my job is to ensure that I get everybody who wants to play to play. Now, in my case, at most conventions, when I DM, I stand throughout the whole session. It's more comfortable for me to stand. I have a better projection of my voice. I can walk around the table depending on the setup. Some conventions are a little tighter than others. But I feel that if I sit, I lose some of the interaction with my players, which means because I am standing and assuming I have a little space to put my notes, my seat is open. That's one seat already that I can give to somebody. Generally speaking, I don't sign, you know, if Rach is playing in a game that I'm running, Rach being my wife, I generally don't sign her up for She doesn't sign up for uh, the session because I want to make sure I get as much people from outside and if I'm not stuffing it with members of my family. She'll still play if she wants to. Maybe even have to stand if she has to. But that Again, comes down to I don't want to turn people away that are at a convention and want to play. So I feel for you again. 
if you have a table that is light or empty of players. But maybe if that's the case, maybe you have chosen uh, a, a game, a rule set that does not fit the convention at hand. You got to know your audience a bit too. I do old school conventions. I run Swords and Wizardry or Swords and Wizardry Light. And I don't have a problem. Getting, I Already at Game Hall, I know my slots are filled. And I have people reaching out to me online saying, if I come by, will there be an opening? And my answer is, if you can find stuff at the corner of the table, you're good. Again, I don't want to turn people away. I want people to have fun. That's what a convention is all about. So, convention play, though, is about pacing. Uh, you have to pace it uh, generally fast. Very little downtime, because downtime is where you lose your player's attention. And that's fine, your home group. Everybody's got that personal connection anyway. And they know they're coming back next week and the week after that and the week after that. And if things don't get completed this week, they can get done next week. You don't, you don't have that option with uh, convention play. It's one and done. And you got to make sure you take care of that with, within that. So... That being said, if you're going to be at Game Hall, I should be there around, I don't know, 6, 6.30 tonight, depending on how the airport, the uh, hotel shuttle gets us there to the hotel. And uh, I look forward to seeing the various taverners over the weekend. You can find me at the Frog God booth, but probably when I'm not running games. I'm running games uh, Friday and Saturday morning, so it's much light. Rapanathic, Mouth of Doom, you know it, you love it, it's 3D, and that's another challenge when you're running, because players can already see what's out there, so you have to take care of that, you gotta keep the pace going so you don't overthink stuff. Alright folks, I'm out of here, I'll check in with you guys and gals tomorrow, uh, be safe, God bless, Roll your dice well. If you're going to the con, avoid avoid the infamous Gareth Sharka con crud. Let's put Far West into a, a seven year backlog. Avoid that con crud. You can come back. You're not at cons, according to Gareth. Sorry, I had to throw that in there, folks. Thank you again, and I will talk with you all tomorrow. Later, later. <laughs>